Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my job today is to welcome you all here. Thank you for coming. Quite an impressive group over here to my left. Uh, this is a momentous day for us to have the governor and the Seneca Nation here in Salem Mansion together. Uh, I also here with my colleague, Andy Goodell, from the 150th Assembly District. And it is my honor to introduce our Senator, Kathy Young.
the governor, Andrew Cuomo, and my friend, Mayor Carmen Beccarelli, and all of the special guests today. In 2002, the Sonic Nation signed a gaming compact with State of New York under the Federal Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. The historic compact required the nation and the state to cooperate in the establishment of three Class B gaming casino facilities. We have been very successful in building our part. We have a billion dollar gaming business right now in <coughs> New York with our Seneca Niagara, Seneca Allegheny, and I have to give a plug to the newly expanded Seneca Buffalo Creek, which is scheduled to open the latter part of August. In the process, we have created thousands of jobs for Seneca's and non Seneca's alike. It has become an important business partner for several local companies hereby supporting thousands of additional jobs in the local economy. On behalf of the Seneca Nation, we appreciate the governor's continued commitment to the economic revitalization of the Western New York and recognizing the Seneca Nation's gaming enterprises as an important component for continuation of our region's growth and transformation. I stand here committed to uphold the terms of our agreement, protect my nation's sovereignty rights, and continue to grow our gaming business and contribute needed revenue for our host cities, especially the city of Salamanca, located in our home territory of Allegheny. Again, I would like to personally thank Governor Cuomo for his leadership in helping resolve this dispute and making our host cities whole once again. As he mentioned, 50 years I've been involved with the Seneca Nation, and I've been here as a member of the Seneca Nation. I stand before you today as a president of the Seneca Nation of this great nation as a leader. Well, as a nation, we have come, overcome great adversities and have rejoiced in many successes. We've had conflicts, debates, but in the end, we work together to move forward our future as one. With that said, Governor Cuomo, it's my pleasure to present you this check from the Seneca Nation of Indians for 400, 300, excuse me. <laughs>
Salamanca. We know that you've had a very difficult few years. We know that it was even more difficult because of the loss of revenue from the casino. You know, the city had planned on that revenue and they budgeted that revenue and it's a lot of money for the city of Salamanca. And when that didn't happen, when that revenue didn't come through, it was a true crisis. Uh, and uh, crises are when we really test people and we find out what they're made of. And uh, Mayor Vecchiarella stepped up to the challenge and led the city through with the leadership of the city leaders. And we applaud you, sir. Mayor Vecchiarella, congratulations. <laughs> partners, my colleagues from Albany, Senator Kathy Young. Uh, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Tom Blumen, Joe Gigio, pleasure to be with you. Tom Blumen, Andrew Vidal, pleasure to be with you. I want you to come out and personally get the check so the legislature didn't get their hands on it. So <laughs> I'm going to be taking the check back with me. But I want to thank uh, the Senator and the Assemblyman for a very productive uh, legislative session. We just concluded in June, our six months of our legislative session, and we got a lot of good work done, uh, as we have for the past couple of years. I've been governor for about two years, and we had a conversation when I started where we basically said, you know, uh, we have to change the direction of the state, and we have to make the state government work once again. Maybe we're Democrats and we're Republicans and we have our political differences, but we're New Yorkers first, and let's put that first and up front. Uh, and we acted like New Yorkers and let's leave the politics at the door. And we've done that. And we put the interest of the people of this state above politics. And you see a lot of other governments, there's gridlock and there's not getting, they're not getting things done and they're pointing fingers, and we're moving forward. And I want to applaud the Senate and the Assembly and Kathy and Joe and Andy, really, for their partnership and their professionalism in doing what they do. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Today is pretty much self-explanatory, uh, and you heard it from the senator and you heard it from the president. The Western New York has had a rough time economically. It's not just about the past few years. It's uh, decades of economic transformation. I was in Buffalo a few weeks ago, and somebody in Buffalo said, tongue in cheek, you know, Western New York has had a bad economy for the past 50 years. Uh, it has been a rough economic transformation, really since the manufacturing era stopped. Upstate New York, by and large, has been trying to find its footing in the new economy, and it's been hard. It was then made worse because the state government was so dysfunctional. And you look at the regions, the part of the country that were successful in doing the economic transformation, they're the parts of the country where the private sector worked with government hand in glove, and they both performed well. And we had a state government that for many, many years was a joke, to use a technical term. I mean, I remember watching it on TV. I remember the annual ritual of getting a budget done. Remember the stories on the state trying to get a budget? Every year was the same story. State's supposed to have a budget done by April 1. So the news reporters would start the week before April 1. Is the state going to have a budget on time this year? Are they going to get it done? And they have all these news stories. And then it would become the night before. Is the state going to get the budget done? And they'd have all these interviews. And then invariably, the state would not get the budget done. And then it would be one day late, one week late, one month late latest budget in history. And it was so frustrating and annoying that your government can't even get the budget done. I mean, a basic, a basic function that you would expect them to be able to perform. And it was that way all across the board. That's what we changed. And it's not just today. You've seen over the past few years, there is a different trajectory for this state. We're getting our budgets done. We have a real economic plan. We've gotten taxes under control, and we're cutting taxes. We're not increasing taxes. We understand that we have to get businesses here, and it's about jobs, 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 because the best thing we can do is get that economy running. 
If we get the economy running, then the mayor will take care of Salamanca, the county executive will take care of the county, and people will have a career and they'll take care of their own families. And that's been our focus. And we also understand that we have to change this state's reputation and change this state's reality because you can't be the tax capital of the nation and expect you're going to have a successful economy. And that's why everything is about cutting expenses, limiting spending, and bringing jobs back to New York. And we have made progress. And today is emblematic of the progress. This was a four-year dispute between the state and the Seneca Nation. So for four years, there were no payments coming from the Seneca Nation. So Salamanca, that was reliant on the payments, Niagara Falls, that was reliant on the payments, for four years had no recourse. The state lost hundreds of millions of dollars in the process. And the state couldn't figure out how to solve it. And it went on month after month after month after month. We believe in professionalizing the state government, <coughs> making it work, making it function, and that's what today is about. You have differences, fine. Resolve the differences. Because just fighting <coughs> makes the lawyers rich. Meanwhile, people in this state are suffering. And that's what this agreement is all about today. And we have some young people who are with us today, and that's the other point that this agreement is all about that what government is fundamentally, the fundamental purpose of government is to make this place, to make this community, to make our home the best home that we can make. And to leave this place a little bit better than the place that we grew up. Because this is gonna be your home. And we want you to stay here. We want you to be New Yorkers. And we want you to stay right here at home where we are, and we want you to grow up with us and start families of your own here with us. So we know that we have to make this place better than it is today. And there is nothing that we won't do for you. Everyone, fundamentally at the end of the day, every parent, every citizen, every aunt, every uncle has the same feeling to make this place as good as we can make it for the children who are going to inherit it. My daughters, or the daughters and sons of every person in this room, and there's nothing we won't do, and today is part of that. We're going to resolve our differences, we're going to get to work, to make sure this state works for you. So thank you for being here. Mr. President, thank you. And I have my own presentation to make to you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We have for the city of Salamanca a check in the amount of thirty-four million five hundred thousand dollars.
result of the severe budget shortages, we had to make major cuts in vital services that we provide to our residents. Cuts in education, youth programs, and dozens of workers were laid off. When Governor Cuomo took office, he made a pledge to Western New York that the state of New York would make progress in this issue and other issues facing our region. And since that day, he has truly delivered. The Seneca Agreement is the single best piece of news our city has received, received in years. And with these two leaders, I knew that this would be resolved. My predicament to anybody in the city was within six months we'd have this resolved. Most people didn't believe it, but they have to believe it now. $35 million is a huge sum of money for our city. It means our city can regain solid financial footing. It will allow us to help give our children a decent quality education. It will help us rebuild our crumbling roads and make long overdue repairs of our infrastructure. To make this agreement happen, it took a governor that truly cared about our region and about Salamanca. On behalf of all our residents, we thank the governor. We also thank President Snyder for the work they have done here that has truly helped save our city. And also, as uh, long as I got all the, the authoritative politicians here, you know, our friends, we are definitely putting in for a grant uh, to access some roads, uh, 200 acres that we bought. And so any help that anybody gives us, we would appreciate that. <laughs> I would like to recognize my council back there, who is the team that's been with me, and they've truly stood right with us and working with the Seneca Nation hand in hand. And I believe this will be the best two administrations the nation and city has seen in a long time. Thank you, and God bless you. advanced us <coughs> $25 million three times. Uh, that kept Salamanca going. We were the only city in the state to receive that kind of, of help because we needed it, and my heart felt thanks to you for doing that. And again, uh, thanks everybody for coming today. Thank you the members of the nation. Thank you the members of the press. Thank you young men and women. And we have now concluded. Safe all.